everybody, this is Squidus Nuts, and today we're working on an illustration of, I don't really know what to call it, but it's a crab that's also a kind of submarine tank, I guess, is the best way I can describe it. But it's an, it's an underwater armored vehicle meant to be used for defensive purposes in a war. And um, it's kind of a bit confusing how I managed to, to get to this idea. Um, but you can see me playing around with a few different compositions, or at least you could a moment ago. And I'm just laying down the underlying pencil work as well. I have quite a lot of concept work for this piece, which I will show later on in, in the video. Um, it was really interesting working on the kind of concept art of it. Because um, I went to, I went through a lot of um, different design iterations to get to this one. And I'm hoping to revisit this design a lot. Well, like at least a few times in the future because I've just come back from this work experience program and we learned some really cool stuff um, in terms of like 3D design and it's a relatively basic shape so I'd like to try and 3D model this and maybe even animate it which yeah like more, more on that work experience later because it's really something I'd like to talk about but um so I really wanted to do something based on a crab especially a steampunk crab because I've been really liking decapods lately. I love, I've been loving prawns and lobs- are prawns part of that family? I'm not sure. Okay, let's say crustaceans, yeah. So prawns and lobsters and crabs and all of that. And, all, all of that. and I started by just doing a whole lot of um, drawings of crabs, just images that I found on the internet. And I noticed that there are a lot of different shapes for crabs, which I thought was interesting. Um, originally I was going to do like a mechanical one with gears and all that, which I thought would be really cool. But um, I kind of did some research on crabs, so I just went onto the Wikipedia page, I read about their behavior and all that, and I found something about them being a German, uh, Greek, not German, where I should get German from, a Greek myth about a crab. And it's just funny. So it was this giant crab called Karkinos, and um, it helped uh, Hydra in a battle against Heracles. I think it's Heracles. Well, it's definitely Heracles. I'm not sure if Heracles is the same thing as Hercules or something else. But anyway, um, it helped Hydra battle Heracles at somewhere called Lerna. Lerna? Lerna? I can't pronounce the stuff. Um, and midway through the battle, Heracles stepped on it, which is just lovely. Um, but the Queen of the Gods, Hera, felt sorry for it, so it placed it in the stars as a reward for its services and gave it a constellation, which is where the um, star sign Cancer comes from. So I've kind of linked, I've put a little Cancer sign on the crab, but it's also the crabs, like, because you know how sometimes, like, ships have names and, like, all the convict ships coming to Australia had names. So I, I named this tank, um, Kakinos, and it's just got a random serial number as well, which makes it seem more realistic and all that. Um, some other things I came up, uh, I came up with. There was a fable about a crab that played with the sea. So apparently, it's like a creation myth, and um, the there was a god kind of character who gave the animals jobs to do and they were all playing at being elephants and stuff and like they were playing but they had to be elephants and the guy was like, heh, I don't want to play. So he, he went into the water and um, he started playing playing with the sea all, all, on, all on his own and then a lot of people got really annoyed at it because it would make the tides come in and they'd get, and they'd get flooded and it'd be really sad. And this little girl goes, oh, dad, while you're talking to this god character, this crab snuck away. So the god character's like, ah, right, um, I'm going to check out this crab. And then, and then I think he had to convince, he used magic to make the crab lose its armor. And then he convinced the crab not to play with the sea anymore if he gave it back its armor um, and with some other gifts. But the... The god character said, in order to keep it in check so it didn't keep me messing up, it would make it lose its armor once a year. So that's why apparently the crab's armor gets softer and grows back like once a year or something like that. It was a bit of an old fashioned tale, I think, like a lot of the values. There was a lot of stuff said about children being seen and not heard. But 
Um, it was interesting. Um, there's also the Crab Nebula and Star Signs, which I did do a video on the Crab Nebula um, recently. Um, but then I was, because I was trying to think of the crab mechanisms, I was like, okay, so what do crabs do? Well, they walk normally sideways, um, which was important. And they drum for, commu for communication, so they drum their claws on the ground. And they also use their claws for digging, which I thought was really cool because it would mean it can cover itself with sand and that maybe that could be a defensive tactic. And also the males are aggressive. So that kind of led me to thinking it could be a battle vehicle that combined with the crab, um, that the Carcanos crab. And I also thought it was really um, ironic having the crab named after a battle crab that got stepped on. Um, so a little bit more context about this. Aside from the design itself, I've been really wanting to create kind of like a world setting to set all of my artworks in lately. And this is because um, I've been reading a lot of Terry Pratchett and the Discworld series. It's like world building is amazing. I'm not a huge fan of his actual writing, I feel like they're all kind of a little slow paced and it's a bit dense, it's not really... But yeah, the, the world building is amazing, the amount of detail he puts into it, it's got this whole new calendar system and they all have different names. Other amazing world builders, um, J.R.L. Uh, Tolkien, that, that dude, um, he's got like this whole book, I mean other than The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit which are his famous ones. He's got a book which is just the history of Middle-earth and it's pretty random to read but it's just got little like poems that people wrote once upon a time in like a slot in between and it's really awesome. Um, I, I don't think I've ever read it cover to cover just because it's that hard to get through but the idea that someone put that much work into their world building is pretty mind-blowing to me. Um, so after I started doing that, I was doing a lot of concepts, but I had a lot of trouble coming up with a design I was really happy with. So I did some research, I started off looking at spaceship designs for things like Star Wars and stuff, but it wasn't really that applicable because like, when it's in space, you don't really have to think about how it moves through water and all that. So that didn't work, but it was a really interesting venture anyway. So I ended up looking at how submarines work, because I thought this, maybe this could help me a bit. So, um, because submarines have to be able to withstand really enormous pressure, they normally have two layers, basically. And the outside one steals... wait, no. Okay, the outside one's, like, waterproof and it doesn't corrode, and the inside one's, like, really, really strong, so it doesn't collapse un under the pressure. Um, and they normally have fins for movement like along the sides and they have a little propeller at the back. So it's basically the same way that aeroplanes work with the air going over the wind. Uh, wait, the air going over the wings, tongue tied. Um, and they have ballast, which is like in between the two layers. There's either air or water. If it needs to sink, they'll put water in it. But if it needs to float it back up to the surface, they'll put air in it. And that controls the buoyancy. And they normally have diesel electric engines, which is basically it's like a petrol engine, almost. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's the same engine as a car, but other ones have nu nuclear engines. But all in all, they're basically kind of just a more complex steam engine. And um, the, another really cool, I th cool thing I found was um, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place today. But there was this thing that nuclear nuclear engines do, and it's like they separate the oxygen from the water and they clean out the carbon dioxide within the submarine from people breathing and that provides the air so they don't even need their own air supply because it's generated by the nuclear um, engine. But uh, there, there is a name for that, I just don't know it. <laughs> and they navigate with sonar because you can't see very well underwater so the little feelers that the crab has, I, I decided to make those sonar things. I don't know what sonar things actually look like so I just did some mechanical looking feeler things but I mean, there you go. So that's most of the research I did for that. I actually didn't end up applying most of it but <laughs> it was interesting to know anyway. This is, yeah. So more on the work experience thing I was doing, it was this really awesome one week course, It's it was free, unfortunately you can only do it once otherwise I'd go back all the time, but um, so my school has a thing where you're allowed to 
go to arrange your own work experience and you're allowed to get up to three weeks off school for this. So I took one week off school to do this one week course. And um, normally you work at a company so that you get experience of working and you can choose a career path that may possibly suit you in the future. But this one wasn't at a company which I didn't realise until afterwards. Um, but it was it's basically kind of this university, halfway between a TAFE and a university, and I did um, 3D animation and game design, and I learned so much. Like I've never animated anything before, not in well, I've kind of briefly done 2D, but not not really. Like I have friends who do it, but I I've never really gotten into it, and I've never I'd never done 3D before, but it was so amazing, and I think I like 3D animation a lot more than 2D, um, because. It's like, it does all of the in-between frames for you. With 2D, you have to redraw everything, but with 3D, you just make a character model and it does everything for you. So I guess it's less kind of like mundane, over and over again work, but it's more kind of creative and logical thinking, and that's really what I enjoy about art. I honestly don't enjoy shading that much. I love designing things, though. Um, so that was really cool. We learned some game programming. That was, I was maybe a little less into that. I didn't hate it, but I, it's just not really what I what I really like but I learned some I learned loads of cool things um, we got to use these graphic tablets and use Photoshop and I never liked digital art before that because I was like oh well I mean I can kind of draw it not very well but I just don't like it as much as drawing on paper but using those tablets and seeing it come up on screen on screen with the pressure sensitivity it looks so cool and I realized that I can actually draw in Photoshop which I never could be able to before and I enjoyed myself a lot so I'm going on a little bit now but that's about the end of the video, and thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this artwork, and I'll see you in the next video.